On Saturday, February 12th of this year, we reached 516 families across 19 community sites. The next number is 1,323. Just two Saturdays ago, we reached 1,323 families across 30 hyper-local sites. You see that growth, right? And that's just so important to underscore because it's all possible only with your help. With your help. Get back to work, field student. Let's go. I got into this because I was a middle school teacher uh, in the South Bronx in a neighborhood that where many of the families were dealing with food insecurity, and I learned that by working with my students and their families. And, and so I, when I found out that they were struggling to get access to healthy food, I wanted to make sure that they, I wanted to do what I could to help them get that. You see that growth, right? And that's just so important to underscore because it's all possible only with your help. With your help, we've more than doubled the impact of our Saturday program in under one year, yeah? But this kind of amazing growth can only continue to happen with your continued support. We're at a turning point the end of the year is upon us, right? We're about to celebrate some of our favorite holidays with our families and friends. And there is nothing more that I dream of for this holiday season and for all the communities we serve than to raise enough money to gather enough support to ensure that Grassroots Grocery not only survives, but thrives into the new year. Look, I got a roof over my head, I got food in the fridge, a lot of people don't have that. You know, if you, if you have the chance to give, uh, to help in any way, shape or form, then do it. Uh, because, yeah, you have to get up early in the morning, but once you get here, you're pumped up and you're ready to help. You're ready to move some boxes, move some cauliflower, move some blueberries. How much are those three boxes are those? Double blueberries, double, double blueberries. They get four, four blueberries. Oh no, I'm going in. Oh, well, with blessings like this from Dan, I mean, Saturday mornings, I kind of like feel like a guardian angel, you know, doing superhero work. Cause I know there's so many folks out there that need this and it it's proven by week after week seeing the same people lining up continuously with their carts and their bags. What saddens me is when I run out and there's people there that don't have. That's the sad part. We serve in so many communities in the area. We have Throgs Deck, we have Monroe, we have so many. We go all the way up to Edward, who is back in the northeast side of this area. So we're doing this for the community. That's it, huh? Yep. Oh, wait, hold on. You didn't get, you didn't get, did you get oh, my No. Okay. Exit right to exit 48, Leggett Avenue toward Hunts Point Market. <laughs> you know that I'm the one that runs the show here. All right, my name is Chino. All right, uh, I got my peoples. I got my peoples here. They help me out all the time. And I just cleaned it too today. I clean it out because it was kind of like a little mess. I gotta, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Make sure it stays clean. It's our day, everything. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Is it Greens? Yes. Now, Mod Haven is right across uh, two different bridges, right, right into the, the Upper East Side of Manhattan, which is one of the wealthiest uh, communities in the entire world. Right. And But Mod Haven is the poorest congressional district in the United States. It's literally only thanks to you 
that this program grows, right? This is a bottom-up, neighbors helping neighbors revolution. It's a revolution, that, hey, there's Juliana. It's a revolution that insists that we all have a duty to lift up our fellow neighbors. In the first refrigerator that he opened, I went to the opening and it was in a Hispanic neighborhood. Yes. And he spoke to the crowd, mostly in Spanish. Yeah, right. And the yeah. people lined up around the block so politely, taking only what they needed and moving on. It was just, I, I really just blew my own mind away to see what was happening. And many of them looked like they just arrived. They were wearing clothing that looked like it was from a foreign country with little children. And that kind of opened even my mind to what is going on in communities that we don't live in, but, are very, but live very close to.